So for some time now, I've been thinking of making a video about the sounds and the music that people make or could make with kind of the elements, I suppose, you know, like we're all used to the idea that you can make music with your body, with your voice, or you can take something like a piece of wood or a bit of metal, cut some holes or add a bit of string and make music that way. But for a while now, I've noticed that some people make music using just the world, using just the elements around us. So over the past couple of years, I've collected a bunch of examples and I just thought we'd have a look through them together today just to see some of the crazy things people do with earth, wind, fire, ice, water. So let's see what we've got. Oh yeah. <laughs> So these are sort of shards of ice from a river, it looks like. Oh, it's the, it's the deepest and oldest lake, Baikal, which is in Siberia in Russia. Really deep basin out there. That feels like it's vibrating the entire lake surface somehow like sheets of glass almost, aren't they? <laughs> Throw that ice down. So these have very pure pitches, very pure tones, so it's really easy to make music. I guess less easy to find the specific tone that you want. <laughs> I do wonder whether anyone ever did this, you know, back in the day, you know, were, were cavemen making beats like this. That's a really cool one, I really like that. I would love to write a piece for Frozen Lake. Okay, let's see what's next. This is called the Song of the Dunes, so this is sand making music now, from southern Morocco. I've heard of sand dunes wailing from the, the sound of the wind. So Pascal went down on his feet. Oh wow. Oh. oh so you get the kind of you get the kind of squelch from the, the feet. And then as the sand rolls down the hill, that kind of makes an extra tone. Hook us a whole afternoon to realize there were two sounds. Yeah, he's just saying what I just said the feet sound and then the avalanche sound. That is cool. Alors, dans le sable qui chante, il y a deux seuils. Le premier seuil, il y a une quantité de sable qu'on pousse. Donc, si je pousse quatre doigts. And with your fingers, you can make a higher pitched sound. Ici, ça sonne sans problème. Trois doigts. No sound with one finger. Interesting. Too slow makes no sound. So you have to get a bit of speed up. I guess they start jamming against each other if, if you push them harder. <laughs> I wonder if this is only on certain kinds of sand, certain kinds of dune. Oh, that big kind of trumpet sound as he slides down, that's amazing. I wonder what's that like in real life, that sounds too loud to be real. Sounds pretty haunting. So now we need a chorus of three people slipping down, making a making a chord, a June chord. <laughs> I want to do that. I want to do that. <laughs> this is the most cumbersome way of playing an instrument I've ever seen. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> I'm less keen on writing that one than, than the ice lake, but still looks amazing, still really interesting. Okay, next up, probably one that you all first thought of when I said it, so 
making rhythms and beats by splashing water, but there's actually um, a culture from a South Pacific island of Vanuatu where this is a whole, an actual thing. The tradition there is to literally play music like you might have done in the swimming pool when you were a kid. Let's have a look. Again, having multiple people just makes the effect so much more powerful. Oh, that's this almost dog barking sound. See, I've often tried this myself, and what I particularly... I, I kind of noticed three sounds, really. There was a sort of deep bass sound when you whack it fully into the water. There's a sort of hi-hat sound on the surface, if you, especially if you just staccato it on the surface. And then there's a sort of intermediate sort of snare kind of sound uh, when you just you allow the, the hand to settle a bit further in, but not all the way down to make the bass note. That seems to be pretty much what they're doing there. But yeah, as I say, that having a bunch of people all do it in sync is just a whole other thing. We should We should all do that more often, I think. So that's one thing I'm starting to realize from all of these elemental musics is that they're kind of community things. You need a bunch of people to do them really well. Okay, what's next? Oh, this is another example of water playing from pygmies in Congo. They're famous for their really complex polyrhythms. Again, communal, much more funky beat. I like it. And a bit of singing to go with it. The singing ringing tree. Oh, all right. Yeah. So this is a. This is not involving human interaction. This is the wind playing a kind of sculpture that's been set up to make noises through the wind. So it's, to me, less exciting because I really like the the human part of music making. So this is something that's standing there and this is like the elements playing the instrument rather than us playing the elements, I suppose. It's certainly very beautiful looking, you know, with that narrow bottom and the wide base and the sort of curves. It looks like something a, an alien would have put there. I suppose just musically it excites me a little bit less because it's not like I could go out and write a piece for this thing. It's just the earth playing it. It's just been designed by someone to, to make these noises, but I guess that's a limitation on my part. And this is another wind harp, this one's in San Francisco. Again, you know, it looks like an interesting structure, but it still feels like it's more interesting as a sculpture than as a musical object. Not so keen on these ones. These aren't things we can all get behind, they're just things that kind of happen, and I don't think Whilst the earth is a beautiful instrument, I don't think she's a good musician in her own right. So this is a wave organ. So again, I suppose this is this is the elements playing the instrument. Let's see this. So there's a bunch of pipes <laughs> and the waves splosh and make some sounds. It sounds a bit like when you whack a slipper on a drain pipe, as we all do. Yeah, again, sorry Earth, you're not that great a musician. Orally a bit disappointing. Okay, now we have the Stalic Pipe Organ in Luray Caverns, which is in the United States. People have been banging the formations to make musical sounds. Okay. And then they created an organ Percussion by using instrument. rubber tipped pistons. That just that sounds really nice. I wasn't expecting it to sound as nice as that. It's very settling, very soothing. I just have so the little bit I heard before was just with very short and sounds on quite high pitches, but how are they making these nice, long, sustained notes? Okay, I'm sold on that one. I'd like to write for that. Okay, next. Musical fire table. 
Okay. So it's reacting to the sound. That's not really an instrument, is it? Boo. Well, there must be one with fire. I suppose fire doesn't make a noise, so... This is a clip of an archaeologist playing prehistorical musical lithophone. So, and this comes back to that opening one. It sounds quite like the uh, the sheets of ice, doesn't it? Now, these may well be musical instruments. But of course, we've no idea what they would have played on them. I'm not sure this guy's got the right idea, but. He's definitely getting into it. It'd be really nice to play a stone like that with such a nice tone from a rock. It's quite surprising. Again, I can picture this with a ton of people, each banging their own rock. Then you'd be onto something. Then you'd have a party. Okay, so what have we learnt? Well, we've learnt that the earth itself doesn't make that good music. Um, it just kind of whines. <laughs> Uh, but playing water, playing ice, playing rocks has quite a lot of potential and I think there's some uh, some nice sounds to be made but on the whole I think we all need to get together with our friends to do this and make these kind of pieces communally have a glass of wine, get the fire going and have a party. Let's do it! <laughs>